Good day, everyone. Today's video is going to focus on a specific tool within ArcGIS Pro and primarily within our crime analysis add-in our extension. I'll link to this, so if you don't have access to it or aren't familiar with it, I'll link to it in the video. With this, though, I'm not going to use the 80-20 tool and its, I would say, intended purpose in the sense of that. Uh, if you're familiar with the 80-20 concept, if you think about bars, not all bars are risky. Usually it's a subset, and this is where Eck and colleagues get into risky facilities. About 20% of, say, bars are truly risky, be it for crime, calls for service, whatever outcome you want to look at there. And it accounts for about 80% of those overall issues. So a subset are truly risky compared to all of one specific type. So it be bars, public trains like bus stops, liquor stores, grocery stores, whatever you want to look at. There's a, sub a subset of those that are truly risky. We're not going to use it that way. We're going to use this much more in a law of crime concentration matter manner. And with that, we're going to have essentially risky streets versus facilities. And we're going to identify streets that have a disproportionate amount of violence. And we'll find that a subset of crime occurs on a smaller number of streets. So with that, when we get into the 80-20 tool, it's asking for some input here. We're primarily interested in our ag assault and homicide from 2022. And we're going to end up attaching this to our street layer for Little Rock as a city as a whole. So we have two different layers and we're gonna do it that way. So here, input feature is gonna be the Ag Assault and Homicide of 2022. I'm going to change our aggregation method right now. I'll make a separate video on cluster. I'm still getting acquainted, finding a way I truly like the cluster analysis. I really like, and that's what I'm covering today, the closest feature aspect to this. This is gonna give us some summary statistics within the table and the output. That's super helpful for what we wanna get into. So I'm gonna leave this as is, it's just gonna save it as a second one within the folder that I've been working with. I've made a couple at this point. It's now asking, since I did closest feature, what do I wanna find it closest to? It's gonna specify my streets here. Keep in mind, I have not done the planarize and dissolve of my street layer. This is truly the geocoding layer of it. So it's gonna be about 18,000 street segments. If I do it the other way, we knock it down to about 11,000. With that, what you'll want to do, because if you run this, it's going to give you summarized counts by street segment, but it's not going to give you the 100 block of the street name, so you need to identify what output you want with it. So I always kick in, and these should be familiar if you've ever made an address locator, some of the beginning street numbers of left or right side of the street, along with the street name. So at least I have a reference point of what I'm looking at to where I can pull up a label and be familiar with it. So again, Summarizing what we're doing, we're looking at the concentration of crime across street segments. We're looking at ag assault and homicide from calendar year 2022, and we want to join this to the closest street. Click run, and I'll turn off this layer. And it's going to generate a layer for us. We're not going to have to add anything in. And you can see it's a little faint here, but you can see what we're looking at. And it already separates it out by outside of the top 20% of locations. That's honestly fine, because if I look at the distribution within this attribute table, we have a subset that have crime on them as a whole. And to read this and kind of to think through what you're looking at. So we have one street, it's our FID here. You can see it's highlighted back here too. Oops, ends up being, I'm just trying to scroll over. We're on Colonel Glen, so 6100, 6200 Colonel Glen. But this specific street, and I'm very familiar with it because if I zoom in, this is where the university is, where I did my lovely PhD. So one of the <laughs> most violent streets. With that, had 67 violent incidents in calendar year of 2022. This amounts to, as a whole, over the entire 3,000 so amount of violence we had, this is just over 2% of the total. At the same time, this is a cumulative percentage based on that as well. And we also have, since we have 18,000 street segments, this is the cum cumulative location percentage, so each street is gonna add a different value to it. And it's just adding it up for us as we continue downwards. With that, you can also see, and this is why I added in these values here, so I can see what street that this is associated with. I could go back and forth from the map and look at it. It's just handy to have that kept in so I know where I'm looking. And as you saw, you can see outside of the top 20% of the locations, if we scroll down, there's only about, oh, you can see a ton of zeros as we go down. But I already know because I've run this analysis a few different times. There's only, let's see, there it is, 560 streets, 61-ish if we count zero, that have more than one violent incident on an encounter of 2022. So if I were to do a select by attribute, 
let's do incident count is greater than or equal to and our values too. We have 560 streets selected and you can see where those fall throughout the city. So we can see that these 560 account for 78% of the overall violence throughout the city while only accounting for about 3% of the street segments in the city at the same time. So we have that 3% of street segments accounts for 78% of overall violence. Keep in mind, we only had 3,000 incidents, so by nature, we can't have 18,000 locations. So there is some changing of this base that you would have to do here. So even if we took our calculator and changed the denominator to be equal to our input, so we have 560 divided by 3047, it would be 18% of our street segments in Little Rock account for 78% of our violence. So pretty close to an 80-20 concept if you think about it that way. But we still see disproportionality based on that. Now let's say we want to do another select by location or select by attribute and change it to be one of our higher ones here. Let's say just 10. So we know there's at least 10 on those. And we have 42 streets selected. So I'm going to just do hit statistics. And on those 42 street segments, we'll see... And I could just look it up as well. We have 664 divided by 3047. We have 22% of the violence is located on 60 or 42 street segments. You can kind of see what those look like in the background here. So we have a subset of streets that we know have high volumes of crime occurring on them. This is where place-based initiatives could focus on given how little resources we do have but can still get more bang for your buck. So again, here, this accounts for just 22% of overall violence. Again, if we we're looking at all street segments, it's still less than 1%. If we change it, it's still gonna be relatively small, but a couple different ways to view and use the 80-20 tool, not for its intended purpose, but an easy way to look at it in terms of law of con crime concentration. Yes, you should change this cumulative location percentage and how you would interpret that based on us only having 3,047 incidents while having over 18,000 units of analysis. You're not going to have one-to-one, -one, so you need to take that into account. Tons of articles out there on it, but a quick way to go ahead and use the 80-20 rule or tool in ArcGIS Pro for a different type of purpose. And you know, of course, you can always go in and change the symbology if you really want to get into it. So you have the options to get into all of the symbology related to the tool itself and how you expand it with it. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm going to play around with a lot of these other tools within the toolbar as we go on. If not, have a good day. Cheers.